Sel tan pina ni sewal yoi wais kajolat kis kini si si emo olisani.
curi lagi cakapnya. Ini punya hati yang mutuk. Ame mu, ame aku, ame cine am, cine ini punya hati yang mutuk. Ame aku mu, ame aku mu, ame cine am. Kau ni marah ni awil, aku ni dia awil, yang ni nak buat dia ni. Rup rup kau ni marah ni awil, aku ni dia awil, yang ni nak buat dia ni. Eh jeng 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 buang, amari tak rai kene, aku pelai tadi. Eh jeng 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 buang, amari tak rai kene, aku pelai tadi. The Jabua is one of the most sacred and valued dances in the Marshall Islands. It can only be performed with the explicit permission of the Yoruba Labla or the High Chief Yimoda Kagua, and while in his presence. This power today has been bestowed upon Yimoda's brother and Yoruba. Michael Kabua, who is with us here tonight. In fact, the Jabua dance has only been performed six times outside the shores of the Marshall Islands in the past half a century. It is said by our elders that on Ujayato in Kabinado, or the bottom of the sea, a man named Lauren Watts lived for many days without food or water. He dreamt 
of the invisible spirit being we call Nonia, fiercely dancing, wielding sticks with great agility. In this fever dream, he saw a Rigidjit, a being that sprouted from the earth's underground realm. He was very handsome and an excellent dancer. The Rigidjit joined the Nonia in their dance, mesmerizing and intoxicating the woman, watching with his great skill and fine looks. The Nonia became extremely jealous and murdered the Rigidjit by sticking him in the middle of the dance. Afterward, Loranoa awoke from his dream with the command to pass the magical dance on. Dance thus became sacred as the performance of the Chihuahua under the leadership of the Yeroja Labla, or the I Chief. It became reserved for ceremonial war preparation as well as other occasions. The dance weaves together many stories depicting facets of traditional Marseillaise life. The launching of canoes, fishing lures and methods, the building of fast homes, and other important daily endeavors. Danced by selected members from Ujjayi and bands from one generation to the next. It involves both men and women from the community. In one dance, it encapsulates who and what we are as people inhabiting these small patches of low-lying low islands.
Michael Kabua has given the blessing for the Jabwa to perform for us this evening. Please give another round of applause. Jojim Kapubo. Jabwa 
Je vois, je vois, je vois. Yeah. 
the uh, President of the uh, Republic of the Marshall Islands um, and the incoming Forum Chair, the uh, Honorable Christopher, uh, Christopher Loeck, the Prime Minister of the Cook Islands and outgoing Forum Chair, uh, the Honorable Henry Puna, Honor Honorable Forum Leaders, representatives of the associated members and observers of the Forum, Honourable Ministers and Members of Parliament of the Region, Under Secretary General of the United Nations and High Representative for Least Developed Countries, Landlocked Developing Countries and Small Island Developing States, the Secretary General of the ACP, members of the Diplomatic Corps, distinguished representatives of all development partners of the Forum, representatives of regional and international organizations, citizens of the Marshall Islands. With feelings of the deepest appreciation, let me thank the government and the people of the Republic of the Marshall Islands for hosting this gathering of the Pacific Islands Forum Leaders. Thank you for your warm and generous welcome to us all. We have been privileged to witness the display of cherished traditions of your land in your greetings uh, to the leadership of the Pacific. I want in particular to thank the children for being here and for adding to the ambience of the occasion. Uh, to the Prime Minister of the Cook Islands and the outgoing Forum Chair, the Honorable Henry Puna, I convey to you the collective admiration and grateful appreciation of the region for your outstanding leadership and dedication to the forum, the work of the forum over the past year. Uh, today marks the start of the 44th meeting of the leaders of the Pacific Islands Forum. This is a significant number and which attests to the long-standing kinship of the Forum family, a family that has grown over time from an initial membership of seven countries of the South Pacific to a Forum of 16 member countries spanning the North Pacific and the South Pacific two associate members and 12 forum observers. A family blessed by the quality and the enduring support of its development partners. I welcome and thank representatives of the forum's development partners. I congratulate uh, you, Mr. President Lowak, um, through the theme uh, for this year's uh, forum, uh, marshalling the Pacific response to the climate challenge and reinforcing the role of regional cooperation and engagement to generate new commitments and approaches at a global level to address climate change. Under your chairmanship, sir, the Forum will undoubtedly present a powerful voice on behalf of the region. With the recent experience of the Marshall Islands only a few short months ago of severe drought and tidal inundation, the theme for this year's Forum meeting is most aptly on the mark. Climate change is a real and most serious threat to the livelihoods 
uh, security and well-being of the peoples of the Pacific. Looking to the future, there will be opportunities to capitalize on the work and efforts employed to advance the regional priorities with forum leaders set in their meeting in the Cook Islands last year. Prominent amongst these priorities is the review of the Pacific Plan. In its relatively short lifespan, the Pacific Plan has played a significant role in framing and improving regional cooperation and coordination across priority actors. Recalling, however, the leader's vision in 2005 of the Pacific Plan as a living document, the Forum has recognized the importance of reassessing the effectiveness of the plan and ensuring that it remains the key driver for regional cooperation and integration in the years ahead. Tomorrow, leaders will hear from the eminent person, the Right Honorable Sir McCary Morata, who has been leading a distinguished team in an independent and comprehensive review of the Pacific Plan. I take the opportunity to thank Sir McCary and the Pacific Plan Review Team for their extensive work undertaken over the past year. The Forum Secretariat stands ready to advance the new directions which leaders may endorse as a result of this review. The third international conference on small island developing states to be hosted by the government of the independent state of Samoa in September next year will be a special honor for the Forum region. It is the opportunity for the Pacific to lead in the articulation of the special case for all small island states of the world to underscore factors exacerbating exposure and vulnerabilities and in the face of multiple global forces to seek from the international community just and committed responses to shore up resilience and coping capacities of small island communities. In the past year, the Forum Secretariat has worked closely with member governments and regional and international organizations to advance the agenda set by leaders in recent Forum declarations. The historic Gender Equality Declaration proclaimed last year has stimulated a raft of initiatives across the Forum region to improve the economic, political and social opportunities of women. At their meeting in Tonga two months ago, Forum Economic Ministers advocated for the elimination of discrimination discriminatory practices which impede women's participation in economic activity and encourage affirmative action initiatives to improve gender participation. Economic ministers are also driving the implementation of the Waiheke Declaration on Sustainable Economic Development which leaders endorsed in 2011. Improving the region's ability to trade, both among Pacific countries and with the international community, has been a long-standing priority of the Forum. The Pacific Islands Countries Trade Agreement, PICTA, and the Protocol on Trade in Services are essential to facilitate trade in goods and services. Much more can and must be done to commence and to harness the potential of PICTA. To date, only 11 countries have ratified PICTA, and since the leaders uh, last met in Rarotonga, 10 countries have ratified signed the PICTA Protocol on Trade in Services, 
but only two countries have ratified it. Honorable leaders will know from the Pacific Plan review of the strong emphasis on regional integration. I would suggest that the early ratification and implementation of regional trade arrangements such as PICTA would greatly assist and facilitate such integration. The Pacific Aid for Strategy, which is currently being developed, should assist Forum Island access resources to improve their institutional and productive capacity to do trade uh, goods and services. The cooperation of our development partners will be critical to the success of this strategy. Similarly, the Forum looks for cooperation from the broader development community to help the region secure appropriate financing for climate change adaptation and mitigation. The Secretariat has been working closely with member governments to demystify the concept of climate change financing and to identify the most efficient and effective ways for Pacific countries to access and manage the requisite funds. Effective cooperation is especially critical in the maintenance and improvement of regional security. The Forum Security Architecture aims to realize the region's aspiration for economic growth, sustainable development, and good governance. The Bikitawa Declaration of 2000 enabled the Forum region to respond to the assistance sought by the Solomon Islands in the time of crisis initiating the regional assistant mission to Solomon Islands, Ramsey. Many leaders had the privilege to attend the 10th anniversary celebrations recently held in Honiara and can personally attest to Ramsey, Ramsey's many significant achievements and the truly, truly regional spirit of collaboration it has engendered. There are other examples of regional cooperation and solidarity which are delivering important outcomes for the security of our region. I note the successful development and advocacy of a regional position on the Arms Trade Treaty, which was concluded earlier this year, and the Forum's regional strategy on unexploded ordnance which is already generating significant international assistance for our member governments affected by the presence of unexploded ordnance. With respect to the situation in Fiji, I report to leaders that the Forum Ministerial Contact Group was able to visit Fiji in April this year and that this matter is being submitted to leaders for their consideration at this meeting.